Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be exploring the Block World block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg Premium plugin. Right now, we're on the page that has several block worlds added to it as a way of showcasing the different things you can do with this element. The first example has a block worlds paragraph that's denoted by a quotation mark and it's nestled between paragraphs of plain text. This, along with all the other examples on the page, is intended to illustrate how this block can look on your site and the additional text and image content helps to set the scene. This block has numerous content, but more importantly, style options. So you can set whatever colors and fonts you like, make the quoted text italic or bold, add custom quotation mark icons, and more. Beyond customizing and stylizing the block world to make it fit your site, you can combine this block with any of the others in the key add-ons for Gutenberg collection to create your dream design. And there really is a lot you can do with this block. So, before you jump on it, we're going to look through what options it offers and what you need to know to use it. For starters, we're going to need a page to work in. I have one prepared. Here we go. Once here, you can click on this plus symbol to open the block selection. This is where you'll find all the blocks you have installed on your site. So, both Gutenberg's native blocks and key blocks and anything else you may have added. When looking for a specific block, you can browse through the selection here, select your block, and then drag it over to the page. Alternatively, you can click on the plus sign button or within this blank section space to add a block. Then you can select your block from here, or if it's not displayed at the top, you can search for it. Given that the one I want is immediately shown, I'll simply click on it to select. And there, I have a new block world block on the page. It comes with some dummy text that you can change directly here by typing over it, or here in the text input field among the options. Since I'm already here, I'll use the field to replace the text. Give me a moment to type in the content I have in mind. Alright, here we go. Once you've entered your text, you can move on to the icon field. This is where you can choose an icon that will go with your quoted text. As you can see from the note above the field, the icon needs to be in SVG format. You can upload a new one by clicking here, or you can pick something from your media library. That's what I'll do. This is the SVG icon I want. Select. And there it is on the page. Once you've uploaded an icon, you'll get a few options to style it. Those options include setting the icon size. You can adjust it easily by dragging the slider or by typing in a new value. I'm going to set 100 pixels here. Alright. And after that, we have the icon color option. Click on the circle here and you'll get this handy color picker that lets you set whatever color you like. You can also click here and it will open the hex code field where you can enter the code for your chosen color. That's what I'll do. There we go. That's done. And now, before we move on to the advanced section of the content tab, we have one more option left here in the general section. And that is the layout. This option lets us determine the position of the icon in relation to the quoted text. So, I needed to upload an icon to be able to show you properly how it works. As we can see, its default setting is top, meaning the icon is above the text. We also have the inline setting, which looks like this. The icon is placed to the side of the text. For the design I have in mind, I'll use the top layout. Ok. After that, we have this advanced section which contains the additional CSS classes option. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to your element when creating CSS that would style it. And those were all the options we had in the Content tab. Let's move on to the Style tab. And in here, you can see that there are three sub-tabs, each containing options for a different aspect of the block world element. In the first, General, we can set the text alignment. You will have the standard choice of left, center, right. I'll put mine in the center. And then I'll do the same for the icon alignment. I want them to match. OK. Following that, we have the background type option. There are two possibilities. The default one, classic, allows us to set a single color background for the elements. And of course, you can set any color you like. 
And there is also the option of setting a background image when using the classic background type. You can upload whatever image you want or pick one from your media library, and it will appear as the element background. So that was the classic background type. But there's also the gradient background type. With this, we need to set the first color. OK. And then pick the second color. For example, no, better something with more contrast. Say this. OK. Once you've set your colors, you can pick which percentage of the background they will occupy. So the first location option is for the first color. And when you set that, you also need to set the angle. For example, this and the location for the second color. And there, we can see the two colors I set creating a gradient background. Now that it's more visible, I can play around with the angle setting to get different looks for my block world background. And you can also play around with the location settings to adjust the look. However, you should know that the location options need to be set with ascending values. Basically, the first location option needs to have a smaller value than the second one for the gradient to display properly. Other than that, we have a few more options here. One is gradient type, where we have linear, our default, and radial, which looks like this. And with the radial setting, you can pick the gradient position. The default is center center, and you can see what it looks like on the left. But we have all these other options too. Let's see, for example, top center, there, or perhaps bottom left. Each shows a different gradient position, and you can try all the settings out to see which one you like best. However, I don't plan on using any kind of background in this video, so I'll simply switch back to classic and this will disable all the settings I just made. So we cover the background, which means we have one more option left in this subtab, and that option is the border type. Using it, we can add a border that will frame our block world. Let me show you. I'll pick solid. And then I'll click here to link the values for all sides of the element. And then when I enter two pixels here, a border will appear around the block world content. And we can change the color of that border. The option comes with this user-friendly color picker, so making the change is super easy. Also, the border width option. I choose to link the values, but I can disconnect them by clicking here. And then we can set different values for different sides, or even replace them with zeros. I'll do that, for example, in the top field. And that has made the border at the top of the element vanish. And I can do the same for the bottom. Then I'll only have a border on the left and right sides of the element. Or even just one side of the element. So you can use this to create an interesting design detail for your element. However, I don't plan on using any kind of border, so I'll simply switch the type back to none. Alright, there it is. And with that, we covered all the options within the general sub-tab, which means we can move on to the next one, the text. The options here will help us style the quoted text part of the block quote element. For starters, we can change its tag. You can pick anything from h1 to the p tag. I'll set h4 for my text. There we are. Then there's the text color option. As its name indicates, this option will let us change the color of the text we're quoting. I'll reset this as I plan on sticking with the default. And after that, we have the text typography. It's a collection of options that includes things like the font family. There are hundreds of fonts that you can choose from here. As I know the exact font I want to use, I'll search for it. There it is. OK. Then we have the font size option. You can use pixels, ams, rams, or the viewport width as the units. And you can set your desired value by dragging this slider, like so. Or you can type in a new value. I'll do that and set 23 pixels as the font size. There. After that, we have the weight option, which has all these settings that let us adjust the font weight of the quoted text. I'll use bold 700 as the setting for this. Next, there's the transform option, which can be used to change the text to any of these settings. And we also have the style option, which can change the look of our text, if we pick any of these. Then the decoration can be used to add a line under, over, or through the text. And finally, the line height and letter spacing options can help us sort out any spacing issues. 
And that's the content of the text typography options. This also wraps up the text subtab. So let's take a look at the spacing subtab. Here we can find options like holder panning. It has the same option of connecting the fields that we saw with the border width fields. And if we link them, we can adjust the padding for all sides simultaneously. Or let me reset this. Okay. Or we can return to using the disconnected fields and then enter a different value for each side. For the block, I'll switch the percentages and then add 24% for the right side and 24 for the left. I'll keep the top and bottom fields blank. After that, we have the text margin top option. We can use it to add more space between the icon and the text. However, you can also decrease the space. Let me show you. I'll set minus 100 pixels here. And this has placed my text over the icon. So you can create this overlapping look by setting a negative text margin top. We also have an icon margin option. As you can see, it comes with the possibility of setting a margin for each side, not just the top. You can link the fields and then changing the icon margin will add a space all around it, which will force it to shift and change its position in regards to the text. However, I... let me reset this. If I go back to using the disconnected fields, then I can change each side of the margin separately. For example, the top icon margin will move both the icon and the text downwards. That's because the text has a set top margin which no longer conflicts with the bottom margin from the icon. And that's virtually it for the block quote options. We only have one tab left over. Advanced. This is something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg. The options here serve to set how an individual block will look and act, for example the responsiveness and motion effect settings here, on the page. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the block quote, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. We've gone over all the relevant options you'd need to know for adding a block quote block to your site. With what we've covered in this video, you should be ready to start adding quotes to your pages. And if you need some design inspiration, you can go back to the page we started from. And here you'll be able to see the different ways this block can be used, how to style it, and how it can be combined with other blocks from the key blocks for Gutenberg collection to create both attractive and informative page sections. It's up to you whether you choose to mirror what you find here or create an entirely new design solution. For this tutorial, I chose to copy this middle example of the three we find here. You can also just base your design on one of these examples and work from there. Now that you're familiar with the options, anything is possible. And if you have any questions after watching this video, comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.